All right, what's up? Today is Sunday, and you know, I have this tan 1975 Scout that I took on a, it's got a 304 Holly 2210, I believe this is. Um, but yeah, I took it on a trip to Wyoming recently, and dude, I got like five miles per gallon. So I think the carburetor was jacked up. So I took this core off of another 304 and I wanted to go through and re do a rebuild on it. So I thought we could just kind of walk you through those steps. I am not a carburetor rebuild expert, but I think it's something that most people can do if you're just kind of organized and take your time. So yeah, let's do this together. So first thing I want to do is just break this, um, take this fuel line off. So typically if you take a, it's like a five eighths and a half inch, you can crack this line. This is obviously bent and I have a good one on my other carb, so we'll just leave this one for the scrap pile. But my, my recommendation is that whoever, I didn't take this off the truck, but when you take these carburetors off, be careful because this stuff is, there's a specific kind of factory way that this runs and it's pretty cool. Next I'm going to remove, what I like to do is take this, like the towel, everything I take off I'll lay out on this. But I'm going to take some of this just accessory stuff off. But again, just lay out your screws and hardware with the pieces that you take off and then you won't forget. Sunday is a nice day to do this kind of stuff because you typically aren't in a rush. And you don't want to be doing projects like this when you're in a rush. Another good technique is take a picture so you remember how things go back together. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is actually just clean the exterior of this thing down a little bit. I'm just gonna get some of like, some of the thick stuff off. So I got a new toy. And I'm pretty excited about a uh, ultrasonic cleaner with a specific carb cleaner um, solvent. So I'm pretty excited to take this grubby, and this came off of like a barn find truck that had been sitting for like 30 years. So I'm pretty excited to see. I've heard a lot about ultrasonic cleaners. My friends have them, I've seen what they can do, but I've never owned one, never really personally messed with one. So I think that's good enough for like the big stuff. And now we will start taking the rest of the body apart. All right, so now let's start taking the carb off. I like to take the parts and pieces that are connecting the different, like there's three sections of this carburetor, like the top hat, the middle section, and the base. There are these rods, like this is for the fast idle. So I'm gonna take some of these parts off, paying attention to how they're oriented. I'm just gonna kind of like shoot a lot of this and if you guys want to skip sections go for it I just thought this might be fun to do together I also want to touch base about 
So as you guys know, like we post a lot of videos on YouTube and Instagram and sure they're like for marketing and like, but also like genuinely just to help people out. Like I, I'm a guy that uses videos to learn how to do things and that we just want to really see you guys, see you repair the scout correctly. So I'm leaving all that together. There's the arm, the little bracket, the washer, the nut. This one is for the accelerator pump. Now I am going to clean all these parts. So we'll get them back out. And I'm going to pay attention. This is in the middle slot. So I'm just going to put it back in and put it on my rag like that. But as you know, we post a lot of videos. And there was a dude the other day on an old video that just like, was like, these guys suck. Like, I hate these guys. Like, they're D-bags. I'm like, bro, number one, if you hate our company and think we're D-bags, like, don't watch the videos. No one's forcing you to watch a video that you don't want to watch, so don't don't watch it. Um, number two, like, man, people are spooled up nowadays. And everybody's got an opinion. Everybody wants to hate on everybody else, so. Let's try to just be positive. We're all fighting for the same thing in the scout community to keep them on the road. Keep people taking adventures, enjoying their scouts, building community, all that kind of fun stuff. All the great stuff that... We were kind of talking about this as, uh, with my wife today about localism <clears throat> and whether it's um, at a ski resort or in the scout community or a surf spot or a skate spot. It's like, yeah, I get the benefit of people that are local that care about a certain place and they don't want to see it change. I get that. But if you're a surfer and you go skiing in the mountains, like ski where you live, you shouldn't probably go. Or if you want to go hiking, that's not where you're from. So my philosophy is like, man, let everyone kind of within the bounds of ethics and responsibility, like enjoy. If you want to ride an e-bike on, on a bike path or on the beach, whatever, man, go for it. If you want to we see new people coming into the scout community, but they don't look like or talk like or know everything about a 345 or a 304 or a 392 or a 196 or an SD33. Who cares? Take the opportunity to talk to them about what they do like about the scout. Then there's opportunity for learning, passing on and preserving the culture, all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, that's my Sunday things I'm thinking about you gotta just be be cool okay so I got like and I don't know maybe some of you carb experts this one's the center one is longer so pay attention to that and also maybe if you're observant you'll notice that some of these were missing that the kid that took this off Jake God bless you that took this off the truck, misunderstood, and thought we wanted to take it all apart. But it's all good. I have another one. So, like, there's nothing critical. It's just a couple of these mounting screws. Okay. So, I think that's the bulk of... I'm going to take the flathead. I'm sorry again. I'm just going to let this kind of roll, man. Just lift this kind of straight up and off. Again, this baby's been on there for a long time. And she's ugh, gummy, man. Real gummy. This thing would not have been happy to run. But anyway, I'm going to finish taking this apart. You don't need to watch me do that, but pay attention. There's like a lot of little parts and pieces and uh, power valve with a little ball and socket. Like, So just pay attention to all that stuff. And then there's the jets, like down in here 
Those are the jets. I think this is the power valve. Again, I'm not an expert at carburetors. So I like tuning them and I like messing with them. I should probably learn all that stuff. Rebuilt lots of them. So anyway, I'm going to try to like get all this stuff out. It might be a little difficult because of how gummy it is. But let's see what that ultrasonic cleaner can do. Anyway, I'm going to take this apart. These are the lean air, the lean rich kind of idle mixture screws. So there's a certain setting we can talk about when we put it back together. Good starting point, but man, this carburetor is really gummy. It would not have ran good. Ran well, I'm sorry. And if you notice, these bottom screws are different than the screws that came out of the top. So I'm gonna kinda keep those separate from each other. I'm gonna gently pry this base plate off. That's all it takes, a little crack it loose. And... It's a tight car, but like, I think it was a pretty low mileage truck. Okay, so I wanted to show you the parts and pieces. Take a good look at this. It's pretty much disassembled. I'm gonna just, this is about as much as I got the needle and seat out. Accelerator pump is out. I'm gonna pretty much leave it about this state. And I'm gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what happens. I'm pretty excited about this step. And then I'll put all these little parts and pieces in there as well. So just, but look at that. Dirty and, er and everything's like real stiff. So let's throw them in there. I'm gonna put it in for about a half hour and I'll show you how that system works.
All right, so this is an ultrasonic cleaner. Do I know a lot about them? No, I've just seen, again, buddies that have had them. So I read the instructions. First off, this is a... Uh, this ultrasonic cleaning solution for carburetors and small parts. I think you can substitute simple green and other things, but I, I thought the stuff would be smart. It's about 60 bucks for that, and you dilute it uh, up to five to one. So five parts distilled water, one part cleaner, that's what I have in there. I could probably afford to put a little bit more in there. But we're gonna give it a shot. So what I've read is you want it about 120 degrees, which is about 50, well, 52 is 125. 153 Celsius is about 125 Fahrenheit. So that's about the temp. And we're gonna set the timer for 15 minutes and we'll just see what happens. You cannot run this machine longer than one hour. So let's see what happens. Looks like we're gonna have to do this in a couple different shots. I got the bit kind of the, one of the bigger sizes. Let's see what we can do here. Put the lid on. And it's heating up, so we're gonna let it heat up for a couple minutes. All right, moment of truth. Let's uh, check it out. All right. So it said you can run this up to, so that was 15 minutes and it's still getting up to temperature. It's definitely a lot better. I'm gonna give it another 15 minutes. Cause it's pretty non-caustic stuff. Yeah, man. Look at that. That's awesome. 15 minutes. Normally you'd have to soak that sucker for a while. So let's put it back in. It's actually getting nice and hot now too. Let's give it another, uh, another 15 minutes. All right, so that was second shift at 15 minutes at full temperature. Let's take a look. And I think either way, it's probably going to be good enough for me. The biggest question is how did it do with all the passages? This came out really good. Oh. I don't let, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit. I gathered some of uh, the smaller pieces, put them in this little modified Dr. Pepper. Set those in there. Middle section of the body carb in there. All right, go for uh, let's set it up for 20 this time. And what I'm going to do in the meantime is just kind of hand, kind of get some of this detail, get the gasket, which came right off actually. This ultrasonic cleaner is awesome. I'm just going to go after this little like hand detail blow through some of the passages and then uh, we'll check back on this in 20 minutes. 
This has been going for about 15, 16 minutes. So I, I'm kind of getting impatient. So I'm going to pull it out. And this piece I cleaned by hand. Like I took some brake clean, blew out some passages. And I want to put it back in for another session upside down this time. So it seems like as it agitates the water, the sediment kind of settles down. So I'm going to turn this upside down and run this for 15 more minutes. And we'll check on our small carbs. Let's see how we're doing. And 125 degrees is actually pretty warm. It's not like scalding hot, but it's warm. Little rig job tray works pretty good. This stuff came out super nice, man. I don't know if you remember what that looked like before, but it's pretty clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go clean this by hand a little bit, which came out pretty nice, man. I'm really sold on this cleaner. And I'm gonna put this in upside down and run it again for another bunch of minutes. I'm gonna take this carp stud off. run that yeah let's go clean this by hand there's still some sediment in the bottom of this so I'm just gonna kind of like scrape this by hand. When it does it, like it does make the gaskets, it breaks those down pretty well. This comes off pretty easy. I'm definitely gonna run this probably two more times. So I still have to get that out. I kind of can't get it out this way. Oh, cool. See, the hydrosonic works, bro. That was stuck in there before. And the new kit doesn't come with a new one, so we want to be careful. I'm gonna clean that. And then we'll, I'll take some time to blow through some of the small passages. You know, for example, man, there's all these, like, it's hard to see the tiny little passages. See that? You want to blow through all of those. That's a lot of dirt coming out there.
A lot of small stuff, man. There's a lot of gook in there, so it doesn't take much. So I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna run this this body probably two more times. And I don't care if they're just for dowels or whatever. I'm just gonna clean as much stuff as I can. And that's really uh, what rebuilding a carb is about. It's really just about, you're not like, I mean, sometimes there are broken parts, but most of the time it's just dirty. And so, you know, cleaning it for the exterior so it aesthetically looks nice, but most importantly, passages, ports, just getting it clean, resealing it, internal vacuum leaks, internal fuel leaks. Um, and these carbs are pretty good. When you get into like a quadrajet or a uh, thermo quad with the plastic housing, it's a lot more challenging. These uh, Holly two barrels are actually pretty sweet. Pretty easy to clean and easy to rebuild. Cool. Okay, <clears throat> so that was 20 more minutes on the body. No, 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 this was the top upside down. Nothing looking better, man, that did it. So I'm gonna call it good on this piece. I've already kind of blown, blown through all the passages on this. I'm gonna let that, I'm actually gonna go rinse that in water. Now I'm gonna run this upside down for another 20. And I'm going to let it, I'm gonna let it soak to give the machine a break. I'm gonna keep the temperature going. Uh, so we'll run that for another 20 and we'll check back. All right, so we got all the parts clean from the ultrasonic cleaner. Big fan of the ultrasonic cleaner, so thumbs up. This is essentially two, about 45 minutes of soak time for each part. Kind of went through, laid out the kit. It's pretty basic. Like I said, most of rebuilding is, um, is just uh, cleaning. So I'm gonna start going through this and just reassembling it. I'll start with probably the base first and work my way back up to the top. I'm gonna go until they stop and then go out one and a half turns. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the main body of the carb. There was a little tiny needle, needle that went in there. I put the jets back in. But I found this, I didn't, this was kind of stuck when I was taking it out. Sorry. And there was this little washer that I found in the bottom of the hydrosonic cleaner that I think this holds the spring in. So I'm gonna mess with that for a second. Got this functioning correctly. Now I'm gonna carefully <laughs> place that back in there.
when I started this carb, this uh, valve was actually stuck. So that's good that it's functioning now. I'm sure there's like a tool for this. I don't have one. I'm gonna look into it though. So it operates freely. Okay. I think I think that's it for this portion. Now we're gonna move on. Before we join them together, we're gonna put together the uh, needle and seat. This is all freed up. And we'll set the float height level and build out the accelerator pump as well. Okay, and I found the bigger screwdriver to work better. There's a tiny gasket that goes in there, so make sure you got that gasket. And again, I'm just making it snug. All right, so I got the gasket, switch it, and there's like these little dowels that, I'm hoping it's the right gasket. And there's these little rods in there that you gotta be careful of. On a carburetor, you should never, never have to force anything. I remember this longer bolt went in the middle. And I'm not using this to torque anything down, it's just really to get it started. And I don't know if you'll remember or notice, but this carb was missing a couple of screws. So I'm gonna bummer, but so I'm not gonna tie, I'm just gonna make these snug. That's probably good enough for now. Go check everything for movement. Now for the fun part, I gotta figure out how to put these, it shouldn't be too hard, how to put these rods and clips back on. So let's get that going.
Uh oh. I'm gonna take a break and figure out how to put that back on. I might have to take this bottom back off. Okay, so note the self, put this uh, cam, this fast idle cam on before you put the rest of this on. So now I gotta take this back. By the way, uh, I'm also self-filming this. I mean, it's probably very painfully obvious by now. In order to get just more videos done like this, we just, I figured it might as well just film them. Next up, we're just gonna put on our cams and then I think we're just about done. So this rod, make sure it goes, remember it goes on the inside, so the back side. Okay, last piece right here. Well, then we have our, some outer pieces. Okay, this is, I believe this is like a choke pull off. Test it out, it gets, it works well. And remember it goes over here somewhere. Choke is on. It works great.
right, so here we go. Anyway, that is a 304 two barrel Holly 2210 model carburetor. Came standard on most international scouts, all the Scout 2s. Um, basic rebuild, pay attention, stay organized, clean everything twice, and uh, take some reference pictures. But uh, hopefully, you get the uh, gumption to tackle that on your own. Kits are available on the website. Thanks for hanging out. Next up, we're going to install this and we'll talk through how to tune it and some of those good things. It's all pretty basic. Hopefully you're motivated to see that you can do it, man. You can tackle stuff.